All right, here's an overview of the Imagine App Creator interface. So in the top left-hand corner, we have the name of the current project, and this is the project menu. So from the project menu, I can start a new project, I can open an existing project, I can save my current project, and I can clone or copy the existing project that I'm working on. I can reload the project, which is useful if I want to see changes that have been applied by other editors. I can break out to the project CMS, which is the website which contains the data that may be behind, uh, for example, product listings. I can bring up the project folder, which is all of the images and fonts and other assets that uh, will be packaged inside this project. I can bring up project settings, and project settings is very useful to do things like set the background color or adjust some of the standard um, timers and spinners and, and menu styles. From project styles, I get access to a menu um, and this menu lets me set all of the styles um, that are inside my current project. Um, those can apply to pretty much anything that has text, like buttons or um, text areas or toolbars. Uh, in addition, I can get to the publish menu, and the publish menu lets me do things like, for example, set up my screenshots, set up my icons, and uh, set up all my um, project names ready for publishing to the various app stores. Finally, I can sign out and I can bring up the help site. Now underneath this, we have the current page and all of the components that are on this page. So you can see as I click through them, um, I can see which items I have selected, or I can click on them to pick them myself. We have resize handles you can grab hold of. We can position things exactly. You can see the snapping. So as I get near the edge of something or near another object, it snaps on and locks on to make it easier for me to align. We also have a guidewise menu here where I can bring out guidewise, which uh, are also handy if I want to align across pages. So for example, I can snap to that guidewire. Just drag to get rid of them when I don't need them anymore. Now, the properties inspector um, can be popped out into its own panel or it can be stored away here on the side. I kind of like it down here on the side. Now, what this allows me to see here is both the properties but also the actions. Now we don't have any actions applied to any objects yet, but if we look at our properties, as I move things around or resize them, you can see the position and information changing. So I can always get in there and manually adjust those. Equally, I can go in and change pictures, change properties of those objects, until I've got everything just set up how I want. Now, I'll demonstrate actually adding a new object to this page. So if we press the plus button up here, what this is going to do is add a new component to the page. So if we press plus, we'll go back to basic, choose a button, insert that button, and we now have a new button that we can position and adjust its properties on. And there's lots of properties we can change, including um, the image assets used. So for example, I can change graphics or I can load um, new graphics myself off disk. There's a whole lot of properties here I can change, um, fonts, font color, uh, font size and so on, as well as being able to load presets, which have come in very handy, particularly if you've got a style you're trying to uh, adhere to across your whole project. And then when I've, uh, if I've got a component that I don't want anymore, I can just press the trash icon to remove it. All right, now down here we have a very important section. This is the pages, templates, and foreground objects. Now, I can create new pages by pressing the plus button, and it creates me a new blank page. But if I press this button here, it'll clone the currently selected page. So I now have a page two, um, which I can change some properties on. So let's take this picture here, change this background. So we now have page one and page two with different content on them. Now templates are particularly useful for when I want to do data binding or um, set up a standard page that will run in the background of all my other pages. Um, but in this case, I'm going to go to the foreground. Now, in the foreground, these, these are items that will sit in the in the front of our whole application. Uh, we'll certainly do the pages that I apply them to. So in this case, I'm going to use it for some navigation. So I press the plus button, go to my layout objects, and I'm going to choose a toolbar object. Now, one of the great things about the toolbar is I can manually assign all of my images, or I could just go through and uh, pick a preset. So I'm just going to use the gray toolbar here, and I'm going to change the default font color so it stands out a little bit better. So when I go back to my pages, you can see I've now got a toolbar down here, and it runs across both of these pages. So they're already set up to use that foreground object. Now by clicking on the, uh, the foreground object, I can go through to my toolbar, I can set my um, default 
action. So when it's selected, I'm going to set it to bounce so that these items will bounce when they're clicked on. I'm going to go to the first item and I'm going to go to a new tab. So I'm currently on the properties tab, which shows me everything about the current component. But if I go to the actions tab, then I can actually add new behavior. So by pressing plus, I'm going to use the show page action. I'm going to tell it to go to page one when I click on this, and I'm going to use the page fold animation. When I go to pay item two, I'm going to add the show page, and this time I'm going to go to page two with the page fold animation. So the result of this is when I go back to my pages and I press the play button, which you can see down here on the right, when I press to page two, it folds to page two, and I press to page one, it folds back to page one. So these behaviors, these actions for the toolbar are held in the foreground, so they sit uh, on top of all of the pages. Now, the other items here are save, which is a shortcut, undo and redo if I want to change um, any of the decisions I'm making. Um, this is a very helpful button here. This lets me see my layout on different types of devices, and I can set up which devices I prefer. I can choose a specific device, so I can say, what is this going to look like on an S3? What's going to look like on an iPad? I can change my zoom level, which I can also adjust using the mouse wheel. And I can also rotate orientation here, so I can change from landscape to portrait and see how that's all going to work. And once again, I can run my app and test it out as if it was running on device. And there you have it, a very quick overview of the uh, Umagine interface.